Every 28 hours in this country, a black person is murdered by security officers, police officers, or vigilantes. There are more people in prisons and jails today than there were enslaved in this country. Alicia, everybody's seen the hashtag at this point. They've seen the slogans and the protests. What is Black Lives Matter and how did it come about? Black Lives Matter is a project that's designed to celebrate the humanity, the brilliance, and resilience of black people in a world that devalues black life. And we use Black Lives Matter as a place where folks can come together online and offline to collaborate, to strategize, to build power together. We've seen the hashtag take off, but we've also seen spins on that hashtag, like all lives matter. What do you think about that? Well, I think that it uh, points towards a utopian reality that we don't live in right now. So when you look at what's going on in the streets right now and the protests that have been basically nonstop for a couple months, do you think that this is the birth of a new national movement? And if so, what is the movement? Young people have decided um, that enough is enough and that it's no longer time for slow incremental change or for compromise. And that what we need right now are radical shifts in our social system, in our economic system, and in our criminal system. And we need folks who have been in the movement for a long time to really be supporting their capacity to win. Do you think that Al Sharpton should actually step aside, not be in front of the camera, and maybe put forward a younger face? It's a different moment today, um, and so the needs are different, the conditions are different, and so it's really important that leaders, and elders in particular, are listening to what's changed and listening to what's needed from those who are directly and mostly impacted. Can you name some of the younger people who are just as involved that we might not know about? Folks like the Black Youth Project, Folks like Millennial Activists United in Ferguson and Tribex in, in Ferguson and St. Louis, Hands Up United in Ferguson, the Dream Defenders, Dignity and Power Now in Los Angeles. So there's obviously so much momentum right now for the movement and the news cycle is very much tuned into what's going on, but where does it go from here? Making sure that we are really moving towards pushing for our demands to be adopted um, in, at the federal level, at the state level, and at the municipal level that there is adequate and consistent data that is collected across the country um, about police killings and officer-involved shootings. Right now, police departments individually can decide what they track and what they don't, how they report and how they don't. So we need a consistent standard for that. Another demand that young people are moving in this moment um, is that there be accountability measures attached to that data. And so if a police department um, shows a pattern of discriminatory policing, that they wouldn't be receiving federal funding, in other words, our tax dollars, um, to promote and continue racism. There's been tons of peaceful protests all over. There's also been some incidents of vandalism and things getting a little more violent. What tactics do you advocate and where do you draw the line? We advocate those types of tactics that really um, shake up the comfort level. What do you say to people who, critics, what do you say to critics who say, you know, smashing property windows and storefronts and some looting is actually counterproductive to the movement? My response to that would be, do we have the same level of outrage when a window gets broken as we do when a young black person is killed in our communities? And if we don't, there's a real disparity there and we need to figure out what that is. When we did that, we went out there and we changed the narrative and once we did, you know, it was, it was beautiful. 